Uh, good evening to all of you. I think, uh, you know, first of all, congratulations to the organizing team of grade 11 of uh, Silver Oaks. I have been coming to this school for the last five years. And I feel so happy to look at these young boys grow up and organize a TEDx. When I got the invite, I was so excited. And it really made me feel, you know, so proud and happy that, you know, I am associated with this school. I do come and, you know, get a chance to interact with the students. So, a big round of applause for the teachers as well. And all the... <laughs> Here, I will just uh, tell you a story of this boy was born into a middle class family now post the liberal uh, liberalization and uh, of course he grew up during that phase and then got into a so uh, you know a typical boy who grows up in a middle class with the same value systems and uh, the uh, the fear of failure which drives you know if you don't get it or you don't succeed, then there is always that fear that, you know, in Telugu they say, Ettu pani you, know, you will be a useless fellow. And that is something which is the general thing which is said in the home and which, you know, drives you, that fear of failure. So, I was also one of the many kids, or this, this guy was one of the many kids who was driven by that. And uh, so, the fear of failure makes you work harder supposedly fear of uh, failure makes you think and be a bit more disciplined be a bit more structured and always you are ensuring that you are a step away from failing and that took me to you know get into this uh, mode of preparing for uh, an exam where you can prove and that journey is something which i would like to reflect on few you know for a few minutes and then go on to what i am doing right now so that uh, got me into you know, solving problems and uh, this thing of you know competitive exams is about solve some challenging problems and you get excited you feel you know you could solve something a bit more and it teaches you about how to approach a thing and approach is more important than solving the entire problem itself and then you land up and you get into IIT and you feel you are on top of the world but there you see some of these brightest minds and then you are humbled back onto the floor, onto the ground which makes you realize, you know, whatever you did and slogged was just an iota because one of those stories was, so I had this batchmate who was one of those international mathematics olympiad bronze medalist winners all india rank 21 so he was also my roommate and we had a next day a math quiz and uh, this the previous night we had this movie hum aap kahe kon so he said no we should watch this and i also said boss this guy didn't attend any class i have attended classes so if he is able to watch i can too so we both sat till and hum aap kahe kon you know it ran for you know along with ads about four and a half hours it ended at one o'clock then we went back to the room so next day morning nine we had we said night out mar lete we'll just finish it you know crack the syllabus so one o'clock we started so i too started this guy was doing it uh, this guy had uh, you know he was in his room uh, you know studying preparing trying to get in i was in my and uh, i went to him asking doubts I think I slogged till 4 o'clock Then I went to check him out He was asleep So I thought oh, This guy is asleep anyway I think he'll You know He might flunk or whatever So I thought Let him sleep I'll still continue I, I held on for some a while And then I also crashed Got up in the morning This guy wakes up 8 o'clock He says Boss I just slept off What about you? I said I also slept off But slightly later we got in, we went to the exam, prepared and, you know, got back. What happened later was, the results got declared. This guy was the guy who scored highest in the entire department, in the entire thing. And I was there at my, you know, with a grade of C. And it made me realize, I got that C grade. <laughs> and I thought, you know, we both watched Hum Aap Kahe Kaun. I slogged two hours more than him. <laughs> because he slept off early 
but why is god unjust to me because i thought it was about slogging you know you are working that 2 hours extra and that makes you realize and there i just suddenly realized it's something which drives which is in your blood jo khoon mein hai you know what drives you as passion so maths he breathed you know for him maths was something which he loved it he was walking he was talking he was thinking about a problem that 2 hours of preparation or 4 hours of preparation was not what he was going in when he was going to crack that paper it was his entire you know self which was immersed in it which made that difference and for me that was one of those enlightenments for me it was about working hard slogging you know be a sincere guy wake up at 4 o'clock slog and again do it to loving something which you really find interesting and that was one of the first things which i learnt when i you know went to this college what lot of people uh, you know admire it for but for me that was one humble learning which is as ramya very nicely pointed out that madness you know and there are some people who are mad and that madness differentiates people from the people who are otherwise those averages you know the average so from there i went on i thought uh, engineering is something which i loved i did some projects in one of the projects i figured out it was not about just paper publishing which i wanted to do something which is you know more uh, hands on more exciting went into the business world worked for a couple of years there in one of the consulting firms i used to work on the fonts of a powerpoint how to increase the font and ensure that it is all in the correct manner uh, proofread presentations but for me it never gave me the kick then went on to do mba and there uh, you know couple of things which i would like to share is you get into a b school and then again you know it's all about being successful and successful is always defined you know from the perspective of what is the highest paying job or what is the best that the previous batch ended up getting i was fortunate to take a course on entrepreneurship there and one of the things which i clearly remember so in i am ahmedabad was this course taken by one of you know my profs there sunil handa and he spoke about uh, entrepreneurship so we had 24 sessions and each session we went to an entrepreneur he took us to a, a nearby plastic mold molding uh, you know the guy who makes buckets and those and he took this batch of 30 students all bright i am guys you know the uh, the would be corporate honchos and there he takes us so he says hiran bhai आप कितना तक पढ़े हो तो हिरेन भाई से सब सातवीं तक सातवीं फेल सातवीं फेल या पास तो सिर्फ सातवीं फेल हिरेन भाई सातवीं फेल हिरेन भाई आप क्या चलाते हो क्या करते हो तो बस आप बाल्टी वाल्टी बनाते हैं मग्गा बनाते हैं और यही हम लोग करते हैं बेचते हैं आपके पास कितने लोग काम करते हैं हाउ मेनी पीपल वर्क इन योर फैक्ट्री सर सब करीब सत्तर लोग काम करते हैं सेवेंटी पीपल कितने फैमिलीज को आप पोषण करते हो हम उन्हीं पीपल आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन यू सब सत्तर तो फुल टाइम है बाकी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वो सब किया तो दो सौ लोग के आसपास तो है ही उनके फैमिलीज मान लीजिए सो एंड ही वुड कम एंड लुक एट अस एंड से ही सेवेंथ क्लास पास्ट ही इज रनिंग समथिंग एन एंटरप्राइज विच इज you know which helps about 200 families to survive on this but you are all guys from ims you would definitely go and work in an mnc and you would want to work for a dollar salary or a pound salary you are all intelligent guys you are not hiran bhais so this all happened and during that part i went i got an opportunity to go to uh, germany on a dart uh, exchange a dart scholarship and when i went there there were two experiences one was i felt very very happy to have come to a country which you know i respected a lot for their technology and the other was a very sinking feeling because i saw this country <laughs> when i compared it with ours you know i thought because having gone there and usually you have that air of you know having done it from an iit or i am you are like floating on top of the world and then you get there and you look at the guys who are from the b grade colleges there 
not very smart they can't do a you know 360 3 into a 422 in a minute but there is something which is fundamental they are far more detailed than lot of us we as indians or lot of us we saw we are very superficial out there and these guys were very hands on very detailed and uh, you know we had uh, mr v v prasad who talked about you know right to walk how the footpaths are detailed lot of minute things which they have taken care of the systems and processes are so nicely made that no matter what the next generation comes in even if they are not as intelligent or as capable it still the system goes on and there i got a chance to visit a school i went to the school which was a world of school and there i spent so i knew bit of german and i saw that these kids were uh you know in the afternoon there were these you know sessions going on not very different from how it happens in india but the afternoon session so i got a chance to visit their workshops and then we had uh, kids you know working on doing carpentry building tables there were the seven standard children who were building a table it was very exciting to see that you know they were detailing out they were saying what type of wood to use what's the size of the table designing it their entire year project was to come up and build a table and that is what they would get evaluated on and that was something which was very exciting because even though i did my engineering i was not very sure if you know that day i was asked to make or get on to a project of making a table whether i'll be able to execute it i could solve a second degree differential equation faster than maybe doing you know building a table and when i reflected back i saw that's one of the biggest challenges in our country there is a huge divide between people who are educated because we don't want to get our hands dirty we are always up there and then the people who do stuff so who repair things and all they they somehow education doesn't reach out to them so the ideas whatever the so called educated class ideates never gets implemented and one of the shocking things is we are not a country which produces the best products in the world do we we do a lot of work which is service oriented we do a lot of work which is you know the support one we don't create products beat it beat most of this so we end up copying lot of stuff and that is something which maybe more was a thought back then in 2005 and this is something which we are working on now after more almost about 7 years i'll just quickly share the story of what you know an attempt is to make education hands on a bit more practically oriented an attempt to solve a problem or to create more doers in our country an attempt to create more students or children who have experienced hands on when they are going through their you know regular uh, studies so this is something which uh, we talk about we are also aware about right to education so we are uh, our country and government is looking at ensuring that more and more people get into the schools so we are talking of 96% enrollment in schools but what about learning is anyone measuring you know how much is the learning level an example so this was one of the tests conducted which tree is the tallest so the question asked for grade 6 and 31% of them felt it was 3.25 vis-a-vis 7 4.2 and all the misconception is because the number of decimal digits after a decimal are not you know are, they are still significant for the child who are picking it up 60% of the engineering graduates could not even light a bulb when you give them two wires a battery and a bulb they couldn't do it now what do we do with this so this was the problem which was lingering around and the attempt was this was an a, a source of inspiration this is national training laboratories mine this chart talks about on the y axis you have student retention rates so if we use lecturing as a mode it's 5% you add it with reading it's 10% add an audio visual component it's 20 do a demonstration it's 30 here is doing 
75 percent and if you have a component of teaching others it's 90 percent now there lied the you know solution of that problem how do we ensure in a country where the challenge is you don't get you know usually you don't get uh, you know best of the people to come into education sector and there are a lot of societal reasons lot of economic reasons but then how do you solve these problems because if you don't have all the brighter you know brightest of the people coming into education then how do you solve it is the answer in lying in the you know uh, fact of doing stuff maybe this is one thing which we tried uh, doing and solving so i'll just show you demonstrate maybe some of the things so a typical thing we figured out was kids don't enjoy geometry right yeah so a lot of them don't like geometry they don't find meaning into you know meaning or the reason why they should learn geometry but this is something which is a small so this looks like a gun right looks scary but so this is something which when we took to schools and said hey let's try and uh, let's look at what are the practical ways of learning uh, you know geometry so here i've got this this is called a clinometer so i the objective is to measure the length or the height of this at the top of this building and how do i use plane geometry to understand that and here i get an angle which is close to 42 degrees so i got 42 degrees here can i measure this length so do i get the height of that so that is a small thing which a teacher you know takes something into the classroom and then you know kids get excited oh this is something which might be interesting let me see and then you have kids going around you know around the place and trying to measure different things but uh, so this is something which you would want children to build and do it because like we learn cycling when you do it you learn it and you never forget vis-a-vis -vis stuff which is theoretical so this is something which we did now the whole essence is how do we look at 1 plus 10 equal to 100 so the efforts being put in are already you know in the school systems if we say 10 is the effort being put in and we are talking about a hands-on component being that one thing which comes in but that interest and that motivation being generated is leads to the hundred that we talk about some research that we started doing in was now how do we find out what do we do with hands-on can everything be done in a hands-on way maybe not maybe the resources are would not be enough in terms of time and money to do it so we went in terms of trying to break each module so this is an example of a module in electricity we look at grades six seven eight ten what are all the key concepts being talked about and look at the interlinkages and dependencies of those look at the key areas where students face difficulties this is looking at a grade so this is is too small for all of you to see but this is the detailing of looking at a curriculum and trying to see what is the crux which children can learn in a hands-on manner you have a aspect of trying to put in a uh, an assessment to see how kids you know where which are the areas where kids face difficulties i think this is one of the crux so once you do that process you are talking about how you could have 350 materials let's say right from grade 3 or 4 to 10 if they get involved into a hands-on way each year they do 10 or 12 projects you are talking about 350 different materials which kids get exposed to this is something which for us working with private schools is one thing but the essence is how do we scale it up because in, an, in a country like india how do we take this to the government schools which is the you know most challenging thing and uh, this is something which we made as a humble attempt we took the curriculum which is followed in the government schools took, looked at the you know key concepts which they are supposed to learn converted them into these are concept map charts so in, into the vernacular medium in telugu made slim charts one of the innovation that was done was how do we work at very affordable rates in a country like india so the global benchmark is about uh, 
40 dollars about close to about 2000 rupees a topic and how do you bring it down to 4 dollars 200 rupees a topic for a classroom and that's one of the challenges because then you can make an impact which is larger this is to show how hands on improves the essence is it creates a delta of 25 percentile now one of the things which is important here and which i would like to share is the model here is how do we work with public systems and government systems and ensure that we can build the scale the scale is because public systems usually no systems that we don't want to work with we get huge enormous scale and how that scale can be used to get a competitive edge in the private uh, you know arena so even if some of you want to look at entrepreneurship as an option it helps to look at how do you work how do you create a social enterprise which can impact even the public and the you know not so privileged class and still ensure so as an organization reached out to about 5 lakh kids and the attempt is to you know reach out to a crore kids in the next 3 years I'd just like to end it with a small video thanks you play the video please this is a small like you know this is an experiment in a in a government school in vijayawada where we were working with kids of 6 7th and 8th they did their geometry session in which they were supposed to build structures and then they are supposed to build a structure which can take maximum weight You can stop there. I think it's the smiles of those kids which make us keep working. Thank you.